Now, data visualizations are powerful, but charts in Excel, well, they are difficult to create. So in this video, I've got some really simple tips that you can put into practice to create an Excel chart. I've broken it down into seven steps for you. We'll get to that in just a second. This video is from our Members Monday community. If you'd like to watch a whole one hour video, a taster session from our Members Monday community, the link is in the video description below. How would you go about creating this chart? Well, the data is not perfectly set up because ideally you would have your axis label data, which is the month and the data that you want to chart, which is going to be the balance at the end of the month. Ideally, those two columns would be adjacent. Sometimes that's not possible for whatever reason. We've got to help ourselves in the way today. If that's not possible, I recommend you just chart whatever column is adjacent to the column that contains the axis labels there. It doesn't matter what's in the column, just set up the chart like that. We can subsequently change it as we're gonna see now. So select the data then go to insert and we're gonna go for a line chart here. Let's go for one of these. Yeah, and as you can see, it doesn't make sense at the moment, does it? It's almost a perfect uh, line there. But what we can do now is we can just click and hold on the series data, what's gonna appear on the chart and then just drag it over to the month that we're actually interested in there. Did you see that? So if you get that view, obviously I've created the chart, then just click on the chart and you'll notice that I've shifted the chart over here first so I can see the data. When we click on the chart, we can see visually um, where the data is, what data is being charted. So I can now click and hold, gotta be quite accurate with that click. You can see the icon that the, that the pointer has there. It's got this little cross. So I just click and hold and pull that across. That's only possible because we've prepared our data. We've taken the time to build those formally to prepare the data. So not bad. Let's talk about presentation then. And one kind of rule we've had uh, when we've been making these charts is generally we de delete the title. Now I kind of recommend maybe if you put the chart down here and then I'm holding down the alt key to get perfect alignment here, holding down the alt key and then you can, you can just delete the chart title. Then maybe you, you'll put the chart title in this space here. That's, that's typically what I typically what I do, but you know, chart title doesn't bother me too much. Let's uh, leave the chart title in. Uh, we would want to communicate that this is the balance at the end of the month, of course. So how would we do that? Well, firstly, let's make the chart title informative. Let's say charts and let's say, um, say performance over time. I'm going to say system performance over time. For me, we just need to specify for the y-axis, what units are we using here? What units are we using uh, in the y-axis? How would we do that? We'll go to chart design, uh, add chart element, and then axis titles, and then primary vertical here. We can see the access, access title popping up. Okay, and we're going to say, um, say balance at end of month. Yeah, that's a nice, simple presentation. I'm a bit sensitive to having calibre in charts. You know, I'll go for uh, Arial, I tend to go for. Um, so if, if I just click there and then hit F4, yeah, if I just hit F4, then it's going to repeat the last action. You can see it's changing the font type there. So hit, hitting F4 already seems a lot better to me. Now it's not uh, using... Um, uh, the Calibri font there. So I said it would be nice to add another series to the chart to, to communicate the profit and loss for each month. As I said, we can kind of discern that from the line, but we can make it really explicit from uh, by adding an additional series to this chart. So how to do that? Select data, uh, add series values. Put the name in as well. Ah, that's the wrong. That's the wrong range. Profit and loss this month. There we go. Okay. And okay, hair bounce at the end of the month. Cool. So can you see this orange line? This is the profit and loss for each month. So for the first month, it's 20, 28. So that's going to be the cumulative and the profit loss is going to be the same for the first month, of course. And you can see it goes down to 1.5 here. Then in April and August, it's actually negative. 
So in the fourth month and the eighth month, uh, it's actually uh, ne a negative value. So we can see that data has been charted. So how about changing <laughs> the kind of um, changing the type of chart, but only for one of the series? So I believe we're creating what's called a combo chart. Now, if I go to change chart type, okay, yeah, we're going to go to change chart type because I've got two series. It's automatically put me into this combo chart. Right, so balance that end. I'm going to put it on the secondary axis, which means it's going to the um, orange line is going to chart to the secondary axis over on the right there. Yeah, and Alan is, Alan is saying could put column charts show good months and bad months profit. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do now, uh, Alan. So let's go to this. Yes, yes, yes. Is that it? I think that's it. Let's see how that goes. So, so it's combo chart. And you can see we've got our line. That's the system performance over time. And then uh, in the columns, we've got the, yeah, the profit and loss for each month there. We've got the access label for the performance over time, the balance at the end of the month. What about the access label for access? Yeah, secondary vertical. Not sure what happened there. Um, did I click on the wrong thing? Add chart element, access titles, secondary vertical. There we go. And then let's say um, profit and loss for months. And there's a couple of questions to consider before you do any charting at all. So really the worst thing you can do is just jump in and, you know, insert charts. Um, so many people get lost there. They just jump in, insert chart, and then there's no data selected and it just all goes wrong. So you've got to ask yourself a, a few questions first. So just to, just to go through the main points, really. Um, firstly, which type of chart are you going to use? And I'd suggest you've got a choice of three, really. You've got your pie chart, bar or column chart, and then line chart. I like pie charts for when there's a sense of proportion and there's a sense of the whole. For example, the example that we looked at in the session was how many people are from each constituent country in the UK. So in the UK, there's Scotland, Wales, uh, England, Northern Ireland. And we had a chart um, saying how many people from each country, all of those countries are part of the same overall entity. So that for me is a good, a good opportunity to use a pie chart. It's, it's a proportion of an overall entity. Pie charts only work where you've got, you know, three or four um three or four categories that you want to include in the data. You know, if you've got lots of categories, uh, you know, 10 or 15, that's probably not going to work on a pie chart, but you can use what's called a catch-all category as well, which might make a pie chart feasible. So you might want to catch all six categories into one category, which might be other, and that will allow you to minimize the number of categories you're going to chart, and that might make a pie chart feasible. So yeah, I, I like going into bat for pie charts. So I'd recommend, um, yeah, looking for opportunities to use them. So if there's a sense of a proportion in a whole, I'll go for a pie chart. Um, if there's a sense of something over time, or you're trying to prove a relationship between two things, and in in the folder, the file from last time, last members Monday, there's a chart in that folder in that file, which is um, it's trying to prove the relationship between the age of the viewer and the viewing time. And the hypothesis is uh, the older the viewer is, the longer they watch. And you can see, you can see, kind of see it on the chart. That's a good example for, for a line chart as well. So you're trying to prove a relationship between two variables. Yeah. And in this example, we've got time. Uh, that's uh, in this case, months. That's a good opportunity to use a line chart. And uh, if you're trying to pr prove a relationship between two variables, again, I'll say that's good for a line chart. Everything else is bar or column chart, which is probably the number one chart to use. Unless you've got a reason to do one of the other two, uh, I would go for bar or column chart. Remember, the bar chart goes horizontal. I think it's underutilized because it's easy to read data because it's horizontal. Um, and then the column chart uh, goes up. So it's got to be the right choice of chart. Then you've got to think about uh, preparation of the data. So here we spent, what, half an hour, 45 minutes just preparing the data. If the data is not prepared, it's very difficult to chart. So really recommend spending the time to prepare the data. You saw the technique we've used today using those different formulae. Um, uh, what do we have? Match, 
uh, simple arithmetic formula, the match formula, count F, uh, offset formula, and sum F. So classic combining formulae together. Previously, we've used um, count F, which we use today. And count F is when you're using discrete data. So text or just a few numbers, you can use count F to count things up and create that summary. Once you have the summary, you can then create the chart. If we're using continuous data, you know, and this would be an example of continuous data, kind of, or this would be an example of continuous data, what do we use there? There we can use frequency. We can use the frequency formula. So we're going to choose the chart, prepare your data properly. These two, these two stages are critical. Once the data is prepared, then it's just a case of selecting the right columns, as we did today. Although today we noted our setup wasn't quite optimal, so we needed to uh, tweak the data afterwards. But if the data is prepared, you've just got to select the columns and then go to insert and then uh, choose your chart. That gives you your chart. And then you're thinking about optimizing uh, presentation. Um, I usually don't have this title, usually delete it and maximize the space that the chart can use. Um, and then it's about creating enough, including enough information to help the reader interpret the chart easily, but not too much information. Yeah, we don't want all the features that chart gives us. So there's a nice balance uh, for us to strike that. Thanks for watching this one, guys. It's from our Members Monday community. If you'd like to watch a full one hour taster session from our Members Monday community, the link is in the video description below.